Coming up, New York Times best-selling author Joel Rosenberg joins us to talk about his latest thriller ripped from the pages of tomorrow's headlines. The Kremlin Conspiracy is up next. Well, you know, there are few authors where the Defense Department looks in to see what they're writing to see if they can uh, adjust their strategy. Well, Joel Rosenberg has been right at the, like, prophetic center of what's going on in our world. And these have been gripping political uh, thrillers, but most of them have dealt with radical Islam. In his latest book, Rosenberg takes on a different threat to the United States, Russia. Take a look. Joel Rosenberg has done it again. His newest political thriller, The Kremlin Conspiracy, feels ripped from tomorrow's headlines. With an American president distracted by North Korea and Iran, a czar is rising in Russia with a brazen plan that threatens NATO and could draw the U.S. into nuclear war. The Kremlin Conspiracy, from New York Times best-selling author Joel C. Rosenberg. Well, Joel's with us now. The book is called The Kremlin Conspiracy. It's just out, and you can get it at Amazon or wherever books are sold. It's a very, it's a, it's a thrilling, a page turner. Uh, but Joel, it's good to have you with us today. Thank you. It's good nice to see you, to Pat. See you. Glad you're doing well. Well, I am too. The Lord has <laughs> raised me up from a stroke. I, you don't normally get back on television a week or so after you've had one of them, but That's I true. have. Amen. Thanks. Good. I'm glad. Listen, Putin clearly has felt. Uh, like uh, he's being ignored, uh, and he has megalomania uh, at the core of his being. You point out a leader of Russia that wants to go to war with America to establish his dominance. How close is he to Putin? Well, so the, in, the, in the Kremlin conspiracy, my fictional leader is fictional. I mean, he's not Putin, but let's call him Putin-esque. Putin-esque. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that allows me to disconnect the reader from the, from the day-to-day -day headlines and take you on a, a worst-case scenario war game, yeah. in a sense, uh, without getting tripped up on, do I like Putin? Do I not like him? Is he, is, is he complicit with American? With it? You know, all these issues, set those aside for a moment and just go on this high speed right race that being said I've got two objectives yeah one is to keep you up all night so that at 5 30 in the morning people are cursing me on Twitter because <laughs> they've been reading all night right, right. I, I write these short chapters that are like they're like Pringles you can't eat just one you know you're supposed to read all night so that's the first objective all right but the second objective is to make people say is this possible mm -hmm. we pray you know pray it never comes true but look Pat as you know Vladimir Putin poses an existential threat That's to the right. United States. Radical Islam does not. Putin is more dangerous to us and our allies than radical Islam. But and that's saying something. The reason is that he has a nuclear arsenal and they don't. Is that's that right. That's right. What, what, what Prime Minister Netanyahu has been meeting with President Trump about is to make sure that, uh, that Iran never gets nuclear weapons. Yeah. Putin already has ballistic missiles yeah. and 7,000 nuclear warheads. Now about 2,500 of those are active, but the rest are sitting there in an arsenal ready to go if he needs them. The challenge is that much of American leadership and the American people have been focused on Iran, North Korea, right. ISIS, Al Qaeda, and these are serious threats. But Putin as a threat is rising. Mm -hmm. He's invaded the country of Georgia That's and he right. occupies 20% of the country still. He invaded southern Ukraine, Crimea, and he annexed it, mm -hmm. made it part of Russia. He invaded eastern Ukraine, the Donbass region, and he, and he controls it today. He sent military forces into Syria to help Bashar al-Assad and the Iranians mm -hmm. slaughter hundreds of thousands of people and, and create a foothold for Moscow in the Middle East for the first time in, in a generation or, or several generations. This he is invading one country after another. And you know you, the old saying, if you give a mouse a cookie, mm -hmm. they'll want a glass of milk. Putin has ate, eaten the whole bag of Oreos, That's and right. now he just grabbed the dairy farm, That's and right. nobody is stopping him. Well, you know, he just announced that they have uh, something that, that is 
20 times faster than the, the speed of sound that they can uh, uh, invade and, and defeat any uh, uh, the missile defense that right. NATO can uh, raise against them. This is amazing. And do you think he's, he's blowing smoke or do you think he's got the real stuff? Well, I don't know if he has these weapons. We'll find out in time. But, but this speech that he gave last Thursday yeah. is the most aggressive speech that Putin has given in 17 years in, 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 at the height of the Kremlin. He, he has, in fact, he showed video of, of animated simulations of uh, Russian nuclear missiles right. heading for Florida. Mm -hmm. well, that's pretty provocative. And he said, the world is not listening to me. Listen to me. I'm not bluffing. 6,000 6, miles at 20 times the speed of sound. That's frightening. It is. Because he's talking about a first strike. Now, in the novel, The Kremlin Conspiracy, back to fiction for a moment, mm -hmm. my Russian leader has a plan. Mm -hmm. And the plot is to do a lightning fast attack on three NATO allies, the right. Baltic states, right. uh, Estonia, right. Latvia, yeah. Lithuania. Yeah. They're small countries. Most Americans don't know where they are. Mm -hmm. But the theory of the Russian leader is if I attack those with 100,000 Russian troops, this is a small set of countries, I could grab those in 96 hours. Now you mm -hmm. say, <clears throat> well, why would someone do that? These are NATO members since 2004. Mm -hmm. That means that they are protected by Article 5, the mutual defense right. pact that if one country is attacked, everybody comes to their defense. So why would a Russian leader do that? And the theory in the Kremlin conspiracy, the gamble, is that the Russian leader decides nobody's going to stop me. Mm -hmm. I grab those countries. What, is the United States and NATO really going to go to war, maybe nuclear war with Moscow, to, to take back three countries that most yeah. Americans don't know about? That's no. a gamble. Yeah. And my fear is that not only is that being thought of in real life in Moscow, but right today, as you and I are speaking, mm -hmm. uh, the foreign ministers of the three Baltic states, it turns out, are in Washington. The, the headline out of Washington this morning is, Baltic leaders warn the U.S. not to uh, underestimate Russia threat. Mm -hmm. You and I talk about these novels that I write as being yeah. ripped from tomorrow's headlines. I think that's what your trailer says. That's right. This is ripped from this morning's headlines. <laughs> so there's a summit. Uh, on April 3rd, President Trump will be meeting with the presidents of all three Baltic states. Mm -hmm. We have fewer than 5,000 NATO forces, and very few of those are American, in the Baltic states right now. Mm -hmm. Which means that there is not a high enough speed bump uh, of deterrence to stop a Russian temptation that Putin might have. Because if he attacked NATO... And we did not, and NATO did nothing to stop him. That's the end of NATO. Exactly. There is no NATO if you don't defend Article 5. Which means that while our attention's on North Korea and Iran, he could collapse the Western alliance in 96 hours. That's the premise of the novel. And with every passing day, I fear that fiction might be trending towards fact. Well, we did nothing when he took Crimea. We've done, I mean, Putin, I mean, uh, our previous president did nothing. He took the crime here. He just took it. Well, and, and with respect to President George W. Bush, who did so much good on so many fronts, it was right during the Olympics in 2008, at the end of his term, yeah. where uh, Putin grabbed Georgia, 20% mm -hmm. of it. This is a problem. Uh, each president has, uh, along the way, and of course Hillary Clinton with the famous uh, reset, yeah. which was not even spelled correctly, um, uh, have, has missed uh, judged Vladimir Putin. I, I, I have likened Putin to uh, the Godfather movies. Uh, he, he's a crime boss, but he's not Sonny Corleone. He's not a hot-headed, rash, uh, impulsive uh, mafia thug. He's Michael Corleone. He's a cold-blooded, calculated killer with a strategy. When George Bush said, I looked into his eyes, I saw his soul. Well, somebody said, I looked into his eyes and I saw a KGB thug. Yeah. <laughs> well, with respect to President Bush, I think at the time, for, first of all, we can all make it mm, misjudgments of yeah. someone. What happened was a, President Bush did need the Russians to give uh, some at least tacit cover to our moves into Afghanistan when we had to deal with 9-11. Uh, yeah. And in that sense, Putin gave us a, a clear field to, to operate in. Mm -hmm. But but over time, but that's because he was also consolidating his power back then. And now we're 17 years in. And unfortunately, many Americans, I think, 
or I would say many leaders in Washington. I think the American people instinctively get it, but our leaders aren't talking about it. I'm concerned about President Trump, and not for the, I'm not, well, look, the legal process will deal with whether there was collusion or not. I, I think we have to give that time, but my issue is President Trump is willing to take a shot at Rocket Man in Pyongyang. He's willing to criticize and strongly speak on the Chinese, the Iranians, Alec Baldwin, Jeff Sessions. Yeah. The president can't seem to find a negative word about Vladimir Putin. I'm not saying it's corrupt. Well, I'm not saying it's a criminal, but it's odd and it's disconcerting when you have a nuclear armed leader with this level of aggression. And and I, I don't I, I don't want to I don't know why the president won't do it. And I don't want to speculate that it's that it's, you know, immoral or corrupt. Because I also want to separate this important point, point uh, Pat, which is on personnel, Trump is not appointing softies on Russia. That's right. I mean, Jim Mattis at defense, that guy was the supreme allied commander of NATO, that he knows what he's doing, right? Mike Pence at, at, uh, at VP, uh, Mike Pompeo at CIA, these guys are, Nikki Haley, these are strong people on Russia. That's true. On policy. The president on policy is good on, on, on these issues. He's driving NATO to spend more money on defense, and they are. He's spending more money mm -hmm. on a buildup on American defense. But his posture towards Putin is weak. Mm -hmm. And I can't explain it. And I'm not ready to run into the leftist analysis. Uh, I just don't understand. And I'm concerned. The president needs to be strong and draw a line that's clear with the Russians. He probably doesn't want to engage in a nuclear standoff. We used to have mutual assured destruction and MAD, and those other guys are in the Kremlin. They knew what the America could do, and they didn't want to have their country blown up. And so, but Putin it looks like he's willing to take the risk. Well, that's, that's why he that's why he needs to be dealt with with strength. Mm. Because he because remember President Trump during the campaign questioned whether even Article 5, the mutual defense pact was was valid, whether he would enforce it. Now he's changed that, but not everyone including the Baltic leaders that are in Washington today, the foreign ministers feel convinced as they stand right on the border with a Russia that's building up its forces and threatening so aggressively. The fictional president in the Kremlin conspiracy is a new leader. Yeah. Now, we all thought that, you know, I mean, the polls told us Hillary was going to win, so I can't say I was writing it based on President Trump, but he's yeah. a new president. And well, the concern is that he's not ready for the challenge, and yet there are advisors to the fictional president saying, Mr. President, Mr. Mr. Russian President, if you attack NATO, this president may not look like he's ready, but what if he has the capacity to change? Mm -hmm. What if he, what if he re responds to us in ways that you do not expect? And yeah. I think that's something we need to pray for our president, uh, the actual real president, um, that he, you know, he listens to, to counsel, and that he that he finds a strategy that will confront Putin. Because I think that if, if Putin grabs the Baltics, we probably will not go to war, and that's the end of the alliance. We, the only way to stop him is to raise the, de the deterrent level. Well, you know, Putin said that the breakup of the Soviet Union was the greatest geopolitical disaster in the 20th, uh, 20th century. And uh, so he wants it all back. Yes, he, does. he wants, and he is smarting under the fact that, he, that Russia is being uh, put into second-class status. That's right. And it really isn't. I mean, people have ignored Russia. They, they, they don't take it. You, you're concerned about Iran and Korea and all these places. It's, exactly, it's a temptation right now. But, but you know, there's for nobody in them. NATO. They're not spending any money. Germany doesn't have any armed forces to speak of. Sweden doesn't have any much. Great Britain has, has diminished tremendously. Who in NATO can stand up to Russia? Only the United States can show the leadership that we have. It tends to be historically that the United States does not show leadership until uh, until it's almost too late. Yeah. The, the latest movie, uh, the Academy Award winner, uh, uh, Darkest Hour, about Winston Churchill. Yeah. That's such a powerful movie. I didn't watch the Oscars, but I love that movie yeah. because Churchill was pleading with FDR, who eventually got it, yeah. but only after... 
uh, after Pearl Harbor. That's right. We, we need to... Now, one other thing. In the Kremlin conspiracy, the, the hero of the book is a former Marine yeah, and a U.S. Secret Service agent. He's had some tragedies in his own personal life, so he's out of the Secret Service, but he finds himself in Moscow at as, the, as the, the conspiracy in Russia begins to unfold, he's at the vortex of the conspiracy, and he has to work with a mole deep inside the Russian uh, leadership to figure out is there one way, as slim a chance as it may be, to stop this war before all hell breaks loose. It's a, it is a thriller. I just pray that it stays fiction. Well, I'm, I, let's hope it's fiction, but I'm afraid you're so... Putin has taken over the media, he's taken over the business, his buddies control all of the money, and they, they used to be independent networks over there, and he's done away with them, he controls right. it all. He's a czar. My, my family, on uh, my father's side, are, were, were Orthodox Jews that mm -hmm. escaped from Tsar Nicholas II yeah. in 1906 when uh, the Tsar was fomenting the terrible anti-Semitic pogrom, mm -hmm. 60,000 Jews dead. Mm -hmm. We were fortunate. Our family got out, got to the United States. So I see in Putin not a communist, not an ideologue, but a Tsar who, who wants to expand uh, the, the, the imperialist borders of Russia and rebuild the glory of Mother Russia. But I also see a mafia crime boss. Yeah. I see someone who's a thug, he's a killer, he wants money, he wants power, he wants influence, he wants respect. That's if you don't give it to him, he will, he will come and take it. That's right. And uh, I think he's the most dangerous man on the planet. Well, I think your book will point that out. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a thriller. It's called The Kremlin Conspiracy, if you like. And this is the book that's supposed to keep you awake at 5 a.m. <laughs> wondering what's happened next. Joel, thank you for being with us. This... this when did this come out? Just today, we were launching it on here on today. CBN. This is today. This is today. I'm available so in hardcover, audio, and ebook. I'm thrilled to be the one that introduces this to the American public, and um, it's available wherever books are sold. Today is it's the day. The Kremlin conspiracy. Joel Rosenberg. Joel, thank you so much. That That's was exciting. God thank bless you. So you. God All bless right, you. Terry. Ah, it's breathless. I look forward to those books. They're always remarkable. Great job again, Joel.